The New York City Ballet recently began its fall season. The company is made up of 90 dancers who are ranked by group, the highest being a principal dancer. I, I never had a dream of being a principal dancer. I don't think I knew what that meant when I was younger. I knew of being a professional dancer. I knew of all the stars. I knew of Makarova, Baryshnikov, Susan Jaffe, Jose Carreño. I mean, I knew of all of them, but I didn't know the status of what that was or what that meant um, until I came to the School of American Ballet and I started going every night to the ballet and seeing Wendy Whalen and Jennifer Ringer and knowing that that is what I wanted to do. That is what I wanted to be. In a story which seems like it was created by a Hollywood screenwriter, Mearns was given her big break quite unexpectedly. Peter Martins put me in the role of Odette Odeo when I was 19 um, because somebody else was injured and they needed uh, spots filled. And all of a sudden, one day, the schedule went up and my name was there by itself for Swan Lake. I had no idea what that meant. I kept asking people, what does this mean? What does this mean? And no one knew. And when I got to the rehearsal, she said, Peter wants you to learn Odette. I was like, oh my gosh. I just didn't, I didn't know. And it was three weeks until the opening show. So it was kind of like cram time. It was, I learned it, I rehearsed it in three weeks and on stage. <laughs> It seems like yesterday when, when I, when I uh, decided to put her in Swan Lake. I think she was in the Court of Ballet. Um, and I think everybody thought I was nuts, or my colleagues and so forth. And I thought, well, I'm not nuts. She can do it, and she can probably do better than anybody. And uh, I guess I was right. It's so interesting with ballet when suddenly you get certain dancers singled out in their teens. Um, I wish I'd been there when Sarah Mearns was first singled out to do Swan Lake. What a great thing before the age of 20. I've known it with one or two other ballerinas to be singled out that young. Um, but almost always that means this is going to be an important career. I was little, Swan Lake was my favorite ballet, it still is my favorite ballet, and I learned parts of it. I learned parts of Swan Lake when I was younger. Swan Lake is a fairy tale. A girl, Odette, has been turned into a white swan by an evil sorcerer. The spell can only be undone if a man, pure in heart, in this case a prince, swears his undying love for her. But in Act 3, the sorcerer introduces the prince to his daughter Odile, the black swan, who tempts the prince to betray his true love. You can play Odile so many different ways, and I love with Sarah Mans that she, she plays it seriously. She's not just an obvious glittering vamp. She is a woman that Prince Siegfried can fall for with the same quality of romance that he found in Odette. This last time I performed it, I wanted to take a different approach this time. This was my third time around doing it, and for me, preparing my dramatic side and my characters were more important to me this time than any other time. She even makes it interesting that the steps, she shows you relations in the steps, and of course Odile mocks Odette, it's like the Fouetti turns are actually connected to turns that Odette has done. Um, it's as if Odile is saying, I'll give you what she did, but now in a major key I'll really do them for you. Fouetti turns, it's an element that you have to surpass and you have to be able to do, but to me that's not what Swan Lake is all about, is about the turns in Black Swan. So I don't want to make that my main focus, because it would take me away from 
the characters and everything else I have to do in the two and a half hour ballet. Odile for me is someone that is trying to get attention from somebody else and she'll do anything to do that. But you have to give little hints of sultry and sexy, but mean and unforgiving. I have to say that I enjoy dancing the white swan a lot more than I do the black swan. I have a lot of fun in the black swan and it's a great change, but I don't think I could sustain that. The white swan, I feel like I have more highs and lows to it. I do become that sad swan. I think it's maybe a flaw sometimes of mine that I get too involved and too emotional in what I do but I think it pays off when I go on stage. I never really thought about my curtain calls until this past swan night. I have to say, I never really, I knew that it was a special thing to have that when you're on stage and you've just done one of the hardest things you've ever done and you never really pay attention or listen sometimes to the audience. You just know that it's loud and they're clapping. But when the curtain went back up for my first curtain call with Swan Lake with Jared, I almost cried because it was so loud. I only heard that when I was watching Macarva tapes. I didn't know that the sound could be like that. And I just turned to Jared, I was like, did you hear that? Can you believe that? And I'm, I've never really spoken about it because I know that speaking so, about something like that, it's kind of, you seem, I don't know, I don't know what you seem like, but you just don't talk about those things. But I'll never forget that. I don't know if I'll ever get it again. I don't know. But that moment, it was pretty overwhelming. Yeah. It pays off when you see Sarah Mann's dancing all the time. It's not just in a dramatic role in Swan Lake, well, a dramatic one that tells a story. She brings out this dramatic quality to the pure dance ballet as a balance. Many of us have known that there are co complex dramas going on within the pure dance of those ballets, but plenty of dancers don't wake up those undercurrents. With Sarah Mann's, there was this urgency. There's a need to communicate something. It's as if a lot is at stake whenever she's dancing. Like many dancers, Sarah Mearns started dancing when she was three years old, which soon became a family commitment. My mom stopped working. Um, she wasn't working and my dad was working. And um, so she had all of her time was for me and my brother, because my brother danced as well. So everything was poured into that in the studios and the competitions, the dance tap competitions we went to and the costumes, she made all of my costumes for all my recitals. And so it was actually a bigger commitment for her than for me in the beginning, because she had to provide everything for us, or she did. She didn't have to, but she did, which was amazing. My mom drove me an hour and a half every day to Charlotte to take class with Patty McBride. I think that was the turning point where it was, this is something that I want to do. Um, I didn't know the magnitude of New York City Ballet or New York or anything like that at that time, um, but I knew this is something that I had to do. As Sarah developed as a ballet dancer, she auditioned at the School of American Ballet's summer program the first step in being enrolled as a full-time student. Even at the summer course at SAB, there are so many talented dancers, it's kind of overwhelming. When I came to the winter term, uh, it's, it's a lot of pressure being at the best school in the country, but um, you step up to the plate in, in some way, because you know you got here, they took a chance on you to bring you here, the teachers, the school. So you need to up your game. I remember her in workshop. I remember her at her last year at SAB. And I thought, 
this girl is going to be something. It was, it was obvious to everyone. But what was different is that I, I was, maybe was a little more bold to throw her out there. Go. Balancin used to say to me, you know, people criticize me for being, uh, for not nurturing dancers and to prepare them and take a little time and prepare them for the big moment. And he said, I don't believe in it at all. You put them in the water, they sink or they swim. It's the only way you find out. And you know, it's interesting. Dancers are very mature at, a, at an early age. And it's essentially, he, he was exactly right, you know. I, I, 16, 17, 18, that's when you're ready, you're ready. You don't have to wait till you're 24. There are some dancers who the moment you see them in the School of American Ballet, you make a little mental note and you think, I want to watch that one's career. Now sometimes that career then comes to nothing and you never see them beyond the Corps de Ballet or they retire early on and have children, marry, whatever, do something.